Either way, I have been thinking about the murders extensively, so I guess it's time to try my best yet again with the epitaph. Even though it still is a total mystery to me. Like, I have no confidence in any of my previous theories regarding the epitaph. I mean, yeah, I found some rivers that fit the epitaph a little. I even have the heavy lake, but it still doesn't lead me to anywhere. I mean, I guess I can look at maps a little more, but without any new hints, I feel like I'm chasing flying pigs here. Could there be something that I'm missing here? Is there, like, anything in the second game that I have seen that could help me? Like, anything. Not pretty. In which case, maybe I should think of the epitaph in a different way, maybe? Maybe not from the perspective of a location I need to find, but maybe a philosophical way? A river meaning what? The course of life? The multiple roads that one may take in life? Like the Shichishito? Village would symbolize home for people, like a gathering of, of humans of sorts. Shore is... Blech, it's useless. Feels like I'm trapped inside a box over here or something. I think I'm just gonna... I think I'm just gonna go somewhere. I, I don't think that this chapel over here is helping me that much. I think I'm gonna go somewhere else. Like, get some fresh air outside and think. Think... Outside the box? Look for the short tool tell you of. The lines! This door is opened only at probability of. I gave up that I was. <laughs> okay. I gave up after I was unable to finish reading the first of the two lines. It looked like the others could read it properly. Um... The fuck are you doing? The two will tell you of, meaning the lines displayed at the door of the chapel. What George is thinking of there, like the MBTQ, meaning he was counting from million to all the way to quadrillion, counting up to 15 zeros that he couldn't do with all the fingers on both hands. Yumi, Yumi. Given that Kinzo is well fond of gambling and risks in order to use his magic, this can be interpreted as something that happens, like a miracle of sorts, that has a probability of one in a quadrillion to happen. I mean, that would fit Kinzo quite well. Of course! Of course his epitaph would have a hint of numbers puzzle. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. Therefore, it can roughly be interpreted as a miracle for such a thing to happen at really low probabilities like that. Of course. This chapel here was not built for the sake of a possible wedding. Like fuck that noise. It can very well be possible that this chapel is a hint used for the epitaph. That is why Kinzo was adamant in keeping this place closed, and having the servants clean it up, and taking good care of the key. Maybe if we are to figure out Kinzo's hometown, we will find out that at the end of the road, there is a chapel there. And this chapel here on Kenjima could be a possible replica of his hometown's chapel. Yeah, could very well be. Could very well be. Okay, so what can we get out of the word quadrillion? It has 15 zeros. We can say that quadrillion is 10 to the power of 15. Mil is 1, D is 2, 3 is 3, and quad is 4. 
Or, we can say that the number of groups of three zeros after 1000 is 4. Number 15 doesn't seem that special as of now, but 4 is. We arrive on the island on 4th of October. October is the 10th month of the year, and we have the year 1986. Okay, so we have 4, 10, and 1986. As we all know, the 9 and the 6 are similar, except one is radically inverse. So, what do we do? We subtract. 9 minus 6 equals 3. Possible non early game inspiration. And now, we kept the 3 for later use. Now, since we already used the 9 in 1986, and 8 is a boring number to take into account, we shall replace the 9 and the 8 with 10. Now, we have 1106. Now, we shall use the resulting 3 by subtracting again. 6 minus 3 equals 3. And instead of 6, we have 3. 1103. Now, we shall use 10 and subtract 3 out of it. And we get 7. We add that to our number and we get... 11037! We did it! We solved the epitaph! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Yatta! What the hell am I even doing?管理の基本としてはすまん。ちょいと無用心がすぎたわ。どうぞさん。さっきは笑ってすまんかったな。え、あ、別に気にしてないです。Hideyoshi apologized deeply for not being conscious enough of danger, despite calling himself the president of a company. Hmm. I wonder if that has something to do with Eva, though. Silence fell again. By preparing for the existence of a 19th person, they were accepting that some unknown person was hidden on this island. And since this person might have something bad planned for them, it was only natural that he came with a certain degree of discomfort. おやじ殿はかつて不意に所在を知らせずに姿を消すことがあった。何しろ静寂を好む or, now that I'm thinking about it, those could be the moments when he went to do those weird experiments that was mentioned a while back. Maybe he went to Fukui an orphanage, possibly something that has to do with the servants, like altering Shannon and Kanon. To be his servants and gain magic powers. Hmm. Okay. In which case, I want to ask: For how long has Kinzo been gone at times? Like four days. I mean, that could be important information that can help me in determining how long it took, like how long it took Kinzo to go back and forth between Fuki and orphanage and his house and do his own thing. Or, well, I, I guess it kind of depends. Fuku, Fukuyin Orphanage could be somewhere real close, but he stays there for three days, for example. Or it takes him one day or so to arrive there, stays an extra day, then come back in the final third day. Like, I don't know if this is actually going to help me, but... Hmm. Like, I'm trying to tie in, like, the Fukuin Orphanage to the epitaph and the location of Kinzo's hometown. あったわね。晩年のお母様はそんなことばかりだったから、未だにその怖い雰囲気が拭えないわ。
今だから言えるかわいそうな人だったわそれでその大々的な矢探しの結果どうだったんや<笑> Arranged marriages and all that Man, this was a difficult time, that's sure Misogyny, still arranged marriages, it's... Yeah. Did you find anything? No. The Kakushi Beya is dead. I've never found a lot of my father's 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 father. Well, that's... Definitely not a good thing to hear. Like, further empowering that human tricks like... Hidden rooms or trap doors... Are never gonna be a thing. In future murders, even on top of Beatrice's red truths. I mean, yeah, maybe there were no hidden doors in the murders that happened till now, but maybe there will be in future murders. Because there is no doubt that Beatrice is gonna do even more closed rooms, because that's, that, that, that's, that's the thing that she uses the most. Because she perfected it at this point. That's... Yeah. And then... お父様がどこに行っていたのかはいつもわからなかった。当時からお父様はオカルトに傾倒していることが有名だったから。一部の使用人たちは蝶にでも化けてバラ庭園を舞っていたのだろうなんて嘘吹いていたっけ。はい。
who had been listening to the whole time with her eyes closed, spoke to no one in particular. その、お父様の愛人の噂はいつ頃から。この島に引っ越してきた当初からだから、あれこれ30年くらい前だな。何しろ隠し屋敷の工事なんて俺たちが島に来ちまったら無理だろう。人とか機材の出入りがあるもん
and under the pretense of opening a resort, he had been investigating the island in detail, searching for a clue as to the location of the hidden gold. And they couldn't tell whether that conviction was just him overthinking things, or whether it was based on some physical proof. However, if Kraus, with all his gall, was convinced, then the other siblings were similarly convinced that there must be a sufficient basis for it. モリの ま、on the island, which the Ushirumiya family had lived on for 30 years now. A hidden mansion that no one knew about had been quietly built, and within, there lived a witch known only by her portrait. Even this hard to believe story might not be completely delusional considering all of Kinzo's strange habits and his vast wealth. お父さんがそういう夢を思い描いて隠し屋敷を建てることは不可能じゃないかもしれない。でも現実的な話、その隠し屋敷に愛する女性を不自由なく何十年にもわたって住まわせることなんて可能なのかしら。さあ、愛さ
ってことは今いくつなんや下手をしたらわしらと同じかそれ以上の年齢とちゃうか体にもボロが出る年頃のはずやどんな屋敷か知らんが人目に触れんようなほとんど軟禁に近い生活はそう快適とは言えんやろなそうねお父様が語るベアトリーチについての話が正しいならその縁は30年以上当時は魅惑的な若い女性だったかもしれないけど今は私たちと同格のタフな食えない女と考えるのが妥当でしょうねはあ、I wonder 手紙の内容からもそれは容易に想像できるわお前が言うか<笑>クラウス・ラフト as though blind to his own shortcomings of course Eva was offended but she didn't strike back よせよ兄貴そして俺たちの想像が本当なら親父の遺産問題に彼女は胸を張って参加したいはずなんだ何しろおふくろと違い相思相愛だった可能性が高いからな本人には愛人の自覚と同時に制裁としての誇りもあるかもしれないそれはお母様への侮辱にあたりますよああすまんだが親父とおふくろが親戚の長老たちによる政略結婚だったことは誰もが知ってるだからこそ親父に愛人がいてもおかしくないと確信できるわけだがな The family sank after the great Kanto earthquake, and Kinzo was set up as the Ushiromiya family head against his will. However, in the beginning, he was influenced strongly by the elder relatives, who treated him like a puppet while they pulled the strings. He wasn't permitted to decide anything by himself, not even his marriage partner. And by his meeting with the Golden Witch Beatrice in those unhappy days, Kinzo's lender to the gold was quickly embellished into something dramatic. In other words, it could mean that Kinzo met with a woman he really did love. If she also knew his whole story, then even if they weren't marriage partners, it wouldn't have been odd for her to consider herself his true wife inside her heart. And now, the person registered as his true wife was already dead. <laughs> ザイサンケンどころか家督争いにも食い込む気満々ってことになるでいいなるほどな。この手紙の趣旨が少しだけ見えてきたよ。気分の謎を解く者に家督を。そういう意味か。仮にその愛人が後宮家に序列を得てい
whether we're talking about male or like female like Rosa. The revival of the Shirumiya family had been made possible by the gold Beatrice had bestowed. In other words, the credit belonged to her. She had built that wealth together with Kinzo, so it was natural that she would have thought of herself as the one who should inherit it. It would also be natural for her to despise the thought of giving a single cent to the children of the wife Kinzo had never loved. Nazi turned red, her fist quivering. And there were also complicated circumstances behind her entry into the Urshiomiya register. Those who knew that understood more or less why she was so angry for the sake of Kinzo's dead wife. まあ、その暴挙のおかげで私たちにも公平にチャンスがあるわけなんだけどね。それにお父様はこの暴挙を黙認されている。牛宮家を継ぐのは愛人ベアトリーチュか。愛はなくとも血を受け継ぐ私た
見事その答えを示してみせたとしても私たちは家督を素直に譲るわけもないつまり私たちがこのゲームに対等な条件で挑まなくてはならないという強制このゲームは成立しないのよそうだな負けた時家督を譲ることに強制力を持たせなきゃこのゲームは成立しないその強制力というのはどういう意味だね我々を鎖で縛って家督を譲るよう脅迫でもしようというのかねなるほどね分かったわ私たちが喜んで家督を放棄したくなるようにすればいいわけねなるほどならば確かにベアトリーチェは10トンの黄金を持っていなければならないそそうかわしにも分かったでつまり取引っちゅうわけやなえどどういう意味ですか取引何を後ろ宮家の家督と隠し黄金をよベアトリーチェはきっと10トンの黄金の所在を明かしそれで後ろ宮家の家督を買収するつもりなのよバカバカしい栄光ある後ろ宮家の家督をお,お金でやり取りしようというのですか This... This discussion is not helping one. This discussion is not helping me one bit. These people just love dancing around the epitaph. Like, I need something over here. Like, something that can help me here with the epitaph. Klaus interrupted Natsuki as she started to go on emotionally. In this situation, the more she went on and on emotionally, the worse it would actually sound for them. ああらそう。兄さんの財政状況だって相当に芳しくないと聞いているわよ。次々担保に入れて新しい爆地の掛け金にして負けを認めないために次々新しい爆地に手を出して。内情の話をしたらこの中で兄さんほど火の車の人間は存在しないわどれだけ損失を出してんのよ兄さんは才能ないのよ誰の才能がないというのですか理由にこと書き火の車とは夏日 became indignant once again クロス raised his hand again and interrupted her 多少の誤解があるようだビジネスは定価で判断できるものではない。私のような長期的視野でのビジネスともなると、時に短い短期期間では、一見大きな損失を出しているようにも見えるものだ。兄貴。Man, remember in the second game when we had that little scene with、uh, Kraus and Nati talk to each other in the first day? Before the other members arrived on the island, and and how Kraus was breaking down because of his business and his lack of confidence over here. Man, Kraus is trying his damnedest to protect his image, like in front of his siblings here. Like, if I were to think about it, like, he is trying to keep it cool. Both in this, in this game and,、uh, like, back in the first game, if you guys remember. Like, Hmm. 
自分だけがありかを知る10トンの黄金で私たちに家督を売らせるつもりなのよ10トンの黄金の価値はどのくらいざっと見積もって20億い,いえ200億ねこれだけを積まれたら私たちは歓喜して彼女を次期当主に認めるわ。See him return to silence. Even the rain and the wind sounded louder. And that was probably also the sound of the windstorm that disturbed his insides with their minds. Ooh. Mm-mm. <coughs> They knew that much of the Oshiramiya family assets had been eaten by crows. The drags that remained of the inheritance versus the compensation for being accepted as the head that Beatrice would pay. It was a shame. But honestly, the former was less enticing than the latter. And given what we've seen of Eva's dream with her younger self, something tells me that Eva wants the headship more than anything else. This whole thing is less about a trade and more about how, if one solves the epitaph, they give both the gold and the headship as well. Well, <laughs> あなた。金額の問題じゃないでしょ。不甲斐ない弟たちはお金で後宮家の栄光を売り払うつもりなのですよ。ここで長男の威厳を示さずして何とするのです。野月。しばらく黙っていなさい。これはクラッとくる話だぜ。俺たちは兄貴から2億半ずつ引っ張ろうと思ってた。もしマジョ様が俺たちに10トンのうちの1割も弾んでくれたなら、えっと。20億ね。ああ。俺たちは当初の見積
and had embezzled Kinzo's personal assets. Therefore, when Kinzo died and the inheritance was distri distributed, Kraus would be held to account for that. But if he gave up his seat as the heir to Beatrice, she would also receive the rights to the assets, and as a result, the distribution of the inheritance to the siblings would not occur. In other words, Kraus's embezzlement might not have to be made known to the other siblings. Of course, the siblings were frightened of Kienzo, but it was doubtful whether they still actually respected him as a father. By this time, they each had their own families, their own love, and their own lives. If they were paid enough money in exchange for her and Jimo, the record remains of Kienzo's dreams. There was a significant possibility that they would relinquish to assume me a family name. In other words, Beatrice's victory was already guaranteed in this game. Not as the winner of Beatrice's game, but as the winner of Kenzo's game. Hmm. Kenzo had put up the epitaph, and to this day, no one had been able to solve it. So Beatrice had solved it. In other words, this is less of a game and more like Beatrice's declaration of victory. However, Kiria still felt something was slightly out of place. If this was a declaration of victory, Beatrice would only have to display the gold openly and state that she would buy the family headship. And yet, even at this late stage, she was explicitly telling the siblings to try to solve the epitaph. Why had she set up this new game? where she agreed to hand over the, all the gold and the right to succeed ahead to the person who sold the epitaph. Kiri had tried flipping over the chessboard several times, searching for the best strategy that might have guided Beatrice to this line of thinking. In the end, she reached a single conclusion. Ogori <laughs> Mm. Close enough. She is getting warmer. She is getting warmer. Majo, Hibuo Though I cannot say that I know. <laughs> like 100%. I have my theories, but still gonna have to solve that as well. Demo. なんまんぶんの一家の確率で私たちが解いてしまう可能性もあるはず。何しろ、ここにはお父さんの血を引く子供が4人もいるのよ。出題者の血縁者が4人も揃い、財産を奪われまいと死に物狂いで知恵を出
おごり難解な碑文がお前たちに解けるものかと私たちを見下して威張り散らしたいのよ案外ひょっとすると碑文はお父さんじゃなく彼女が作ったのかもしれないわね上等じゃないの碑文の謎が解けるかですってもしも解いたなら私を当主にしてくれるのね解いてやる魔女の挑戦を受けてやるわ他のまぬけな兄弟たちに解けるものか私一人が解いて私こそが後宮家を引き継ぐにふさわしいということを証明してやるわその挑戦乗ったわ私が。謎を解いてやる。なるほどな。魔女じゃなく。ベアトリーチェという名の愛人が島に存在していたわけかつまり人間は18人以上いるということは18人全員に不可能だから魔法犯罪であるという図式は崩せるわけだえ、yeah, true as we as we mentioned in the previous games if there is a 19th human not only would it be easy to Deny the possibility of magic being involved, but it would be easier on Beller since he doesn't know who that 19th person is, and he wouldn't have to suspect、uh, the siblings and such. So, yeah, that would be something. But whether we're talking about the existence of a 19th person or not, I am curious about where Kinzo went outside of his mansion. If we're talking about a secret hidden mansion out there or Maybe the chapel? I am curious. Hmm. Oh. Hello there, Ron. My good old pal, Ron, Ron, Ron. My Keanu Reeves. Motoro Sama. Gotcha to cookie, why call it a scope? Beato's butler, who caught himself t h r o u g h nowhere. Appeared out of nowhere in particular. Yeah, no, thank you. No need for tea or cookies from you, sir. Placed upon the silver tray that he held was a plate filled with delicious looking steaming black tea and cookies. Cause God knows, maybe you put some aphrodisiacs in them. I've learned my lesson last time to check my food before eating them. Otherwise, I become all. Honey. I really don't like this guy's smile. Ahoy! For some reason, it doesn't look like a smile used to warm and greet a guest. <sighs> My god, I've been watching too many VTubers lately. <laughs> it feels like he's making fun of me for some reason. I don't know whether he really takes me for an idiot, or whether it's just a joke or something, but it's really irritating me. いらねえよあほい俺は今取り込み中なんだほっといてくれおやおやそれはそれは美味しく焼けたクッキーなのにとても残念です人間ごときにはもったいないくらいに素敵に焼き上がったそれはそれは素敵なクッキーなのに気が向いたら食ってやるぜその辺に置いてとっととうせなさようでございますかそれではそのようにいたしますよ冷めてからお召し上がりになって焼きたてを召し上がらなかったことを存分に後悔なされるとよいでしょういちいちうるさいやつだな You know I can definitely imagine some witches hiding out there somewhere like Beatrice and Lambda Delta getting really really mad at the、uh, at the Beller for not eating the cookies Like, they're probably thinking, what is this guy thinking? Those are the most delicious cookies ever! Eat them, you fucking idiot! 
まあ耳元で気色悪くケラケラ笑うベアトのやつよりゃ数段マシだがよいえいえ全、ま、くお嬢様の笑い声は時折実に品がありませんそれを聞くたびになぜ私ほどの高貴な悪魔があのようなものを主にしなければならないのか理解に苦しむのでございますよ。うん<笑><笑>変なやつだな。そんなに嫌なら使えなきゃいいだろうが。Yeah, I mean, why is it that you're working for Beatrice if you're showing signs of doubt of for working with her in the first place? それでもなおお使いするのが家具の喜びなのでございますよ。Okay. So, the next thing is, Kagu is a little bit of a problem. 